understanding shape layers. Let's focus on vector layers. Most users think Illustrator uses vectors, and that is true, but Photoshop has them as well. Let's take it step by step by clearing up the way Illustrator works. Here we have the same graphic as in Photoshop. If we zoom in closer, you'll see we don't get the same grid of pixels as in Photoshop. Actually, as we move in, the program constantly redraws those shapes. You're never going to see any jagged edges. Everything is super smooth. The maximum zoom level in Photoshop is 3,200%, but in Illustrator you can go up to 64,000%. That's huge, and if we resize it, no matter how big we go, it will still look the same. That's fantastic! So that's the main advantage of Illustrator. It uses vectors, not raster graphics, and it constantly redraws everything you place on the canvas. Due to its engine, it can infinitely scale up your designs with no quality loss. And again, that's all through the help of vectors. Now let's go back to Photoshop, because that's our main focus in this course. After raster layers, I want to talk about shape layers. These are vectors like the ones you previously saw in Illustrator. You can find them in the left panel, and they share the same hotkey, U. You can enlarge any of these without losing quality. This is what we'll mostly use for our web design work when it comes to buttons, menus, footers, backgrounds, etc. Let's add a rectangle on our screen so we can further analyse it. We have two options. We can select the tool and then click and drag anywhere on the canvas. This gives you complete freedom regarding its size. The alternative is to click once anywhere on the canvas and a new window will appear, asking you to put in its dimensions manually. I prefer the first option because I can always resize it later. That's the advantage of using vector layers. Now let's focus on the Layers panel where you'll see it's a shape layer because of this symbol in the bottom right corner of the thumbnail. Underneath, our raster layer doesn't feature anything in the bottom right, so that's what I was talking about earlier. Plus, let me demonstrate how shape layers don't allow direct editing with tools like the eraser or the brush. If I select any of them, you'll see I immediately get this forbidden sign. I don't even have to hover over it to see I'm not allowed to modify it. It's the same story with lots and lots of tools and filters. If I click, Photoshop will tell me I need to rasterize the shape layer before I can do anything to it. And that's true for all layer types. You can rasterize them by going into the Layers panel, right-clicking and selecting Rasterize Layer. Now you can erase or paint over it, do whatever else you want to do, but you've just lost its vector properties. You can check the Layers panel for the shape symbol, but you'll see it's not there anymore. Don't be fooled by its appearance on the canvas. Yes, it looks like a shape layer, a rectangle, but you don't judge a layer by how it looks on the canvas, but by its thumbnail in the Layers panel. That's how you know what type of layer it is. Great, now let me give you a rundown of the most interesting properties of shape layers. The following applies to all of them from this panel. 1. When you create a layer, select Shape from this drop-down, not anything else. Moving to the right, the stroke must be set at None. This is what this white and black symbol with the red diagonal line across means, no stroke. I'll show you later how you can add many strokes. 2. When you want to change its colour, you double-click its thumbnail and your colour picker will appear. As you click around, your object immediately updates with the new colour. Please don't use this menu as I don't consider it optimal. 3. If you click and drag and hold Shift, you'll constrain its proportions. That's how you get perfect squares or circles. If you click, drag and hold down Alt, you'll enlarge the shape on the opposite side. Finally, if you click, drag and hold both Shift and Alt, you create your shape from the point of the initial click. So if I get the ellipse tool and I want to create a perfect circle starting from this middle P letter, I'll click and drag from this area, then hold down Shift and Alt. As you can see, it works flawlessly. 4. Everything I previously mentioned works differently if you reverse the order. So if you hold Shift, then click and drag, you'll add to the existing shape if it's selected in the Layers panel. If you hold down Alt, then click and drag, you'll subtract. 
Combine both keys and you'll get the intersection between your shapes. 5. Custom shapes are fantastic. Again, I want to stress these are all vectors, so you can make them as big as you want. You have custom shapes preloaded into Photoshop, but I suggest you check out various sites to get more. Shapesforfree.com is a great source. Download any archive and open it. Inside, you'll find a .csh file. Double-click it and Photoshop will pop up. Apparently, nothing has changed, but you just loaded up all those custom shapes. Now you can use them freely. 6. Rounded rectangles differ from regular rectangles due to their rounded corners. When you select it, you'll see you can choose a radius from here. This tells Photoshop how rounded you want your corners to be. That can be adjusted later. 7. Speaking of that, the Live Shape Properties panel will pop up when you create a new shape. Here you can adjust its width and height from these two fields. If you click on the chain icon, you'll force Photoshop to keep this current aspect ratio. So if you double its width, the size will follow. The rest of the controls aren't that useful, but from this position, you can adjust the corner radius we spoke about earlier. So instead of 10, we can put in 20. The chain is selected by default. That's why all four corners update with the same value. If you unlink them, you can use something like 20, 20, 0, 0, so only the top part will have rounded corners. 8. The Polygon tool is best used by clicking on the canvas. This opens its own window through which you can decide what type of shape you want to create. I use it for triangles, stars and hexagons. And that shapes in a nutshell. In one of my recent series of job interviews for my Android design company, I've met designers who didn't know Photoshop has vector capabilities through shapes. It's a shame not to know about some of the basics of Photoshop, so be sure raster and vector layers are understood before you move forward. Have a question? Please ask away in the comments section. Now, I invite you to download the attached PSD from this lecture and recreate all my steps, especially the ones where you use modifier keys like Shift and Alt. Remember to have fun with it. Good luck.